Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to discuss on the Venus and Saturn conjunction. I get so many messages where people tell me that I have seen some video in YouTube. And then uh, the astrologer uh, said in that video that if you have this conjunction, your marriage is ruined or you're never getting married or you're going to have an extramarital affair or you will have a divorce or a very bad divorce or uh, you won't be able to marry the person that you love or the person that you love will leave you and go to somebody else or a number of scenarios right the world the material world is as complex as it is <laughs> so sometimes we have these conjunctions and then we wonder what what exactly is is it how how is it going to play out for me right uh, so you have to understand that Every conjunction or mutual aspect, right? Or this also holds true for uh, cases where Saturn is aspecting Venus. So, for example, if uh, Venus is in the third house and Saturn is in the first house, and for example, Saturn is in the first house and Venus is in the tenth or seventh, because Saturn aspects the third, seventh, and tenth from wherever he sits, right? So, primarily, this is related to the impact of Saturn, which uh, which it has on Venus, right? So we are not much considering uh, whether Venus is aspecting Saturn or not, which is obvious only if uh, they are seven houses apart. But primarily, we will consider the situation uh, when Saturn is aspecting Venus from any of the three mentioned places. Okay. So now, uh, if you have this conjunction, what does it mean? So first, you have to understand, either irrespective of this conjunction or any other conjunction, what you must understand is that the conjunctions... Uh, the result, the final result of conjunctions will vary depending on your horoscope, right? So, for example, uh, the same the same uh, aspect of Saturn on Venus can uh, be acting in a different way for a person who has a horoscope which is very good for marriage, and it can act in a very different way for a person who has a very difficult chart for marriage, right? So therefore, you, you have to first figure out, before you figure out this conjunction, you have to figure out how is your horoscope when it comes to marriage, long-term partnerships, okay? This can also refer to uh, relationships with your sister or with females in general, right? Even for women, it can refer to uh, the sister or, you know, elderly ladies sometimes, okay? And not too elderly, that will be moon, but yeah, any lady that you are dealing with on a intimate level, right? You know, a very cool, close friend or very close colleague, any anybody could, she could be. Okay, and for men, Venus uh, explicitly represents uh, the spouse, of course. So therefore, first, whenever you want to come to a final conclusion about Saturn Venus, do not do it without checking these houses. So when you talk of love affairs, right, love relationships, uh, then we need to check the fifth house. What is the situation of the fifth house? Is the fifth house, uh, which planets are in the fifth house? Is the Lord, are the Lords of Dustanas like sixth, eighth or twelfth placed in the fifth house, right? And this, this is a bit advanced level of astrology. Actually, it's not, but many of you, you uh, may not have watched the basic videos on astrology. And if you directly jump into this, you might feel this is a bit complicated. So please make notes and if you feel you can't understand, I have a lot of Venus on, uh, I have a lot of videos on like Venus independently and Saturn also. So please watch them and then you will uh, be able to get a hold of it. Okay. So for example, if you have a good fifth house, which means, you know, the good, good planets, natural benefits are in the fifth or functional benefits are in the fifth house, right? Or uh, your fifth Lord is well placed, right? So then you need to understand that this conjunction may not give give me deception in love okay it it may not provide it uh, depending on other conditions of course so that that's like a positive uh, thing for this conjunction but suppose you have uh, the lords of the dustanas or natural malefics in your fifth house primarily the sixth lord in the fifth then this conjunction can be more tough for you okay and uh, of course, you also need to check the Lagna, you need to check the ninth house when it comes to like love relationships, because 
the first house lagna tells you your commitment commitment to one person or to a path or to your career or anything in life right commitment in general not only for marriage or relationships commitment to your health or anything as i said so if the lagna is good and uh, the fifth house is good and the ninth house shows uh, your dharma basically right your ability to let go of negativity and continue the relationship right your ability to forgive others that is uh, the ninth house right your ability to look beyond differences see unity right uh, unity in diversity as they say right unity among differences or uh, to keep your differences aside and look for a higher purpose right so that's what is the ninth house so if these houses are strong enough then relatively uh, it is more probable that this saturn venus conjunction or mutual aspect or aspect of saturn on venus uh, may not be a dreadful thing for you right but suppose uh, the lords of the dusthanas are sitting in the fifth or the fifth lord is in the dusthana especially the fifth uh, especially the, if the fifth lord is in the sixth or the sixth lord is in the fifth right so then this conjunction can uh, to certain extent mean that uh, there could be challenges in love relationships right of course that is also dynamic depending on the dashas right but then now that's only for relationships but when you talk of marriage you need to check the seven the second house the seventh house and the 11th house because the second seventh and 11th these are houses of marriage and marital union right um sanction of the society basically that's what is the seventh house and second house is the uh, family basically expansion of family right and 11th house is the fulfillment of desire so if these three houses the lords of these three houses are well placed either in kendra or in trikon or in mool trikon or in exaltation or in own sign uh, to to whatever extent it is of course there will be some negativity you can't have three planets like lord of second seventh 11th all the three well placed it happens very rarely right because if it would happen then everybody would have a great uh, married life but everybody has uh, some or maybe a lot of problems uh, within their marriage at least some problems right nobody has a perfect marriage so therefore you got to understand that depending on the problems the nature of this conjunction will vary right so for example if the second lord is well placed but the seventh lord is not well placed then your relationship the bonding that you have the partnership with your spouse may not be very strong but you may be uh, very good when it comes to family right uh, taking care of your children or taking care of your parents or in laws you may be very good because the second lord is well placed on the other hand if the if the reverse is true then it can mean you know that seventh house is good which means you know you have a very good bonding you are very good uh, as a couple but when it comes to family you know there are clashes quarrels disappointments disagreements and you know there is trouble from family or in laws or children right so then that hampers the marriage right so if you have the lords of these houses well placed then uh, the results of uh, venus getting aspect of saturn uh, will not be very intense okay of course that will have its own downsides of course but now if the lord of the 6th or the 10th is associated with the second seventh or 11 then uh, this can uh, be a bit tougher because these houses they uh, make you too much uh, worldly focused okay uh, on money finance career and all these things and then this can lead into troubles uh, within the this can give you troubles within the married life okay and of course is if jupiter is well placed then even if there is suffering you are able to you know see beyond uh, suffering and you are able to see the brighter side of each other and the better side of life otherwise if jupiter is not well placed then you only focus on the dif differences right you cannot focus on the positives on the commonalities you only focus on the differences right so therefore along with checking these houses you also got to check what is the situation of your jupiter in the horoscope because saturn is pessimism and jupiter is optimism in a broad sense of course right not not you should not take this literally but in a broad sense it is okay so therefore you got to understand if jupiter is aspecting venus when saturn is also aspecting venus then it's not like plus minus right sometimes you have jupiter venus and saturn conjunction so 
people say oh this is plus minus venus is uh, jupiter is good saturn is bad so good bad becomes zero no it doesn't work like that what happens is you get some suffering you get some pain and you know misery and all this but jupiter keeps you hopeful right that yeah one day things will improve and then things may improve depending on the horoscope of course and depending on the dignity so if saturn is more stronger the misery is more if jupiter is more stronger then the hope is more right so for example if jupiter uh, saturn venus are in uh, pisces then jupiter and venus are very powerful so the hope is more the love is more right but if for example jupiter venus and saturn are in capricorn then the pessimism is more right uh, the negativity is more because then jupiter is in debility there right and venus is reasonably okay but it is the own sign of saturn so then uh, saturn kind of overpowers jupiter and uh, jupiter's optimism right so so therefore or if venus is conjunct uh, friends like friends for example now of course saturn is also a friend but he's a natural malefic right so if venus is conjunct mercury that can help to some extent unless mercury is the sixth lord or the tenth lord okay so in a sense you got to find <clears throat> what is going on in the overall chart and only then you should come to a conclusion because imagine saturn and venus coming together they will stay for around 25 days for example 25 28 days right when if if venus is retrograde then for very long right they could stay even for more also imagine if saturn and venus are changing both the signs together right then they may stay for like you know two months for example so then does it mean that anybody who are born uh, within those two months, you know, they will have a terrible marriage or something like that? No, it doesn't mean that, right? So this conjunction is a conjunction which has a possibility to add suffering into the relationship. But it doesn't mean that everything is going to collapse. So what I'm trying to tell you here is not that this is a very rosy conjunction, okay? And what I'm also trying to tell you that just because you have this, it doesn't mean it's all over, right? So people ask me, oh, sir, I have this conjunction, you know, should I get married? Because even if I get married, I'll get divorced. And there is another misconception that you should not marry before 32 or you should not marry before 38 or 45, you know, if you have this conjunction. No, that's all nonsense. It's all stupidity. It's rampant in YouTube, okay? Don't believe this. Don't trust this because that depends on your dasha. So for example, if you got married at the age of 28 and you run a bad dasha when you are you know 29 for example then even you might get divorced within one year right now imagine you got married at 25 and you got a very terrible dasha for marriage after 10 years so you might get divorced at 35 right so do not pay heed to all these magical years which are there in youtube so of course uh, i'm not saying that you should purposefully go for early marriage but also do not purposefully go for late marriage just see what the dashas are indicating and if you find opportunities for uh, getting married or for partnership just don't delay it because you know you saw in youtube they say oh 35 ke pehle kiya to divorce ho jayega. it's not like that okay now of course one thing is which is very crucial is when you have this conjunction you have to be very realistic about expectations right with your partner otherwise you may experience more suffering. So basically this conjunction is an expression of frustration that you get because of unfulfilled desires, right? Because Venus is representing your uh, sensual desires and Saturn represents lack of certain things, right? So lack of fulfillment of uh, romantic or love or you know, sensual desire. So then if you are um, like, for example, and if depending on the horoscope, you have to identify what does the other person value, right? So, for example, uh, if you are in talks with somebody for marriage and, you know, they, they are too much focused on profession and you are too much focused on the family. So then that may be an incompatible situation and you might get suffering later on. Right. So therefore, understand where you are getting into with whom. Right. That is important. Only then you should finalize uh, either your relationship or marriage, either it's a love marriage or any marriage or whatever it is. Right. So. Therefore, know where you are getting into and then you will be more realistic. So then you know that, yes, this was already expected. And this was me, myself. It was I who had chosen this, right? So now I cannot blame anybody. I cannot blame God. I cannot blame my own destiny. <laughs> and I cannot blame the other person, nor their parents or nor my friends who told me to 
uh, get into this relationship or marriage or partnership or whatever it is, right? So therefore, be realistic, look at the overall chart, understand that there can be challenges, but depending on the overall chart, it will be decided if things will be good, it will become better or it will get worse or it will end or maybe nothing happens, right? <laughs> All right, I hope this gave you a good perspective on how to approach this conjunction and this these same logics and principles you should apply for not only Saturn Venus for every damn conjunction that is there in the world of astrology and this is how you study aspects mutual aspects conjunctions all right thank you very much for your patience and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit or any other transit or marriage or career or health then please go to my website you will find it down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. He will help you to get out of these challenging or quote-unquote uh, negative conjunctions and show you the right way. All right? Just look to him and you will find him. Thank you.